I mean, app GTN Trainer, which opens the GTN 750, it could be 650, but I'm going to show you the 750 Garmin simulator here on the iPad. Very good and useful for training. This is just a simulator, not no use for, um, don't use for flying, as they keep saying every time. I'm going to show you multi piston engine, model 750, Jepson, whatever, show controls, and start. It's very good to train to use how to use the Garmin 750, which is displayed here with a few settings, demo mode, continue, and it really looks like the real one. Database expired, you've noticed it, continue. Instrument panel self-test, we don't, I don't think they display the instrument, so you can't check the CDI half left flag out of view, CDI half up, flag out of view, etc. indications. But in the real life, you would check these informations on your instrument, CDI, RMI, uh, HSI. Fuel on board, whatever you want, 50 gallons, enter. Fuel consumption, fuel flow, 20 gallons an hour, if that's your consumption, continue. And now you have the normal display. You can click on map, which shows where you are. You can zoom in and out with two fingers. We're close to the KSLE airport, or is that USA somewhere? And so, menu, okay, message, the message is flashing always to tell you it's a demo mode on you, so navigation, whatever. You can click the left buttons indicated airspeed and uh, you can add speed. You can see the aeroplane starts moving, indicated airspeed 70 knots at the top and ground speed is increasing to 70. It's moving, you can change the heading from the bottom, uh, increasing the heading so we're turning right. You can change the altitude, I've increased to 1,400 and it's now climbing uh, reducing the indicated airspeed to zero. Now we're not going to move, we're going to stay static for now and play with the COM and NAV frequencies. COM, you can click on this top button, it transfers from the uh, higher to the lower frequency. If you click on the lower button you can Enter the frequency directly, one, two, five, decimal four, zero, and enter. If you click on the same bottom thing and click one, two, five, decimal uh, five, six, no, five, one, no, whatever, five, two. If instead of clicking enter, you click transfer, confirm, yeah, whatever, it enters it and transfer it to the active com. Same thing for nav, click on the top it switches, click on the bottom you can enter the nav frequency, I'm writing rubbish here, and transfer will enter it and switch it. You apparently you can enter like 125 decimal 52, if you want 122 decimal, you don't need to click the 1, you click just 2, 2 decimal 4. Yeah, because they all start with one. It's all 100 something. The um, common air frequencies have, I forgot the exact range from 110, uh, 117, one, 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 I forgot, 112, one, well, 112 to, what is it, 13, one, 130, 130 one, something. Because of that range, you don't have to enter the one at the at the beginning, the 100 is obvious, you can just change from 1 to 2 decimal 4, you can do 1 to 5, so just 2, 5, 4, enter. The 1 is obvious for the GPS. These are nav and comp frequencies. Okay, if you go back, or even if you clicked on menu here, oh, sorry, no, it's not menu, so back, just back. Back you have the map mode, traffic terrain, weather chart, flight plan, procedures. Um, let's go to flight plan. We were, we've departed at KSLE. You can add a waypoint, enter an airport, 
I'm gonna use one in Czechia, I know, because I know the code, it's gonna be very far, but Pardubice Airport in Czechia, Europe, enter, and there we are, and you can add waypoints. And add the waypoints, airports, etc. If you go to map and zoom out, we have the magenta line from USA KSLE. It's going to go very far because I've chosen Europe. So it's a bit of an absurd track, but it's just an example. And back. Back again. That's the flight plan. Procedures. If you are in IFR flight, you may want to enter departures, arrivals and approaches. For example, departing from KSLE, there are apparently no IFR departures, but if I choose another airport, I know, well, let's take the same one, I think it has, LKPD, Pardubice, enter. Now, you have a selection of departures. All the IFR departures available at this airport. Take any, well, take the one you need. It's displayed on this map. You can choose the runway if there are any choices. Transition, there's no choice. And if you click, uh, here you have the different points from the beginning to the end of the, um, that's the whole departure. It actually started at Bulek, then Eruzo, Papa Kilo, 3,500 feet, Papa Kilo, and the runway 09. Load the departure, we'll load it. You have a recap of the points. Uh, and I read I read it on the, I read it the wrong way because obviously it's a departure. I was having arrivals in my head. Departure runway 09 to Papa Kilo Padubice NDF. Climb 3500 feet. Papa Kilo Eruso Bulek. Let's forget about the rest because that's US, that's what I, I chose before. Can I delete this? Yes, click on the point and click remove, remove this. Click on this, click remove, and it removes it. That's the departure. If I go back, I can load a procedure and arrival. I can arrive on another terrain. Maybe if I, I depart from Padubice in Czechia, I arrive in Prague. If I arrive in Prague, I think Prague is PR. I think so. Rosine, I think it's Prague. I think it's one of the Prague airports. Here there are different arrival procedures. Take the one you need. You can use transition. Sometimes in transition you have vector, which is proposed here. Vectors will be vector guided with the ATC. Here is not vector guided, it's just a point. Runway 1 2, no choice, load arrival. So we depart from runway 09 or Padubice, fly over, etc., and arrive at Prague. I'm pretty sure it's Prague. Yes, it is Prague. In so, info, Prague, elevation. You have preview of the airport. You have the procedures, the runways, the frequencies. A few data available for this airport. Clicking on arrival, clicking on Prague, you can check the info. The arrival starts at uh, Gollop, then uh, Papa Romeo 957, 958, Evemi, Vectors, Heading and Arriving. You might want to choose an approach. Clicking on the approach, choosing on the approach, to Prague Airport approach, and now you have different choices. ILS approach, or nav approach, VOR and DB visual approach. Here, I have RNAV LPV. I do not have LNAV VNAV. Why? LPV is only proposed because I have activated the EGNOS. If I click back and cancel and back. If I go to Systems, GPS Status and SBAS, I can activate or deactivate these SBAS providers, EGNOS in Europe, if I'm not mistaken. If I deactivate them, or if I deactivate EGNOS over Europe and back, if I now go to Procedures and to Approaches, to Approaches, 
I have LNAV plus VNAV and not LPV as earlier on. That's because you are not using EGNOS, therefore this GPS not using EGNOS can only provide LNAV, VNAV and not LPV approaches in that mode. So this is an important point to um, mention. I'll go back to procedures. No, sorry, go back to systems. GPS status and SBAS. And if I reactivate these SBAS providers, EGNOS, particularly in Europe, if I go back to procedures and to approaches, approach, it's now LPV, which is provided. If I want to arrive uh, on NAV runway 12, runway 12, GPS LPV, select it. Transition, now here you have three transition method, two points. FME and SOMIS. You can arrive from FME from SOMIS, you can see on the map. SOMIS to the south here, FME on the north. Or vectors will be vectored from further away by the air traffic controller. Channel ID has to be checked. It should be the right numbers, the same numbers on the updated IAC initial approach, uh, instrument approach chart. So check the numbers, uh, 86152 and echo12 alpha. And if this is correct, which it should be, if the GPS is, um, is up to date, you can load and activate. Uh, one other point, one other thing here on the sequences, PR962. PR12F has a little F in the magenta box. That means it is the uh, final approach fix, the final approach point. RW12 runway 12 M is the missed approach. A little M in magenta is the missed approach point. So it indicates you which are the initial final approach fix. Well, initial, I'm not sure, but final approach fix a point and missed approach. And when you're ready, include approach and activate. It shows it again. Approach um, a KPR Prague runway, sorry, uh, RNAV 12 LPV, PR962 point, PR12 Foxtrot is the FAF, final approach fix, all the details, altitude, desired track and distance, well, distance from where I am now, maybe 4000 nautical miles. Um, one way one to map or map to missed approach vectors. This is the missed approach. I want to map MAP mapped missed approach and vectored to four thousand feet gives you the altitude you have to climb to after missed approach procedure. This is loaded, so you just need to click back and to map. Now we're we're in the US, I'm gonna go to Europe again. To show you it has been loaded and it's now displayed on the map. These procedures are displayed in magenta lines on the map. There we are. Zooming in and a departure from part of here. I think the departure goes to Gollop, probably the oh no, it even goes to well wherever it has to go to. And the approach here in magenta and white, sorry. To Prague, it's been loaded, the informations are displayed. Yeah, that's Prague Airport. And they're displaying here with the points, altitude, etc. Uh, ah, okay, one other, one other point maybe. This switch, CDI, you switch from DPS to VLOC is important because it means the instruments that are fed by this GPS nav frequency, let's say the nav which is here, 112.9, decimal nine, it doesn't correspond to anything because it's not founded, but 110.3 is an ILS, it's ILS, L ILS, whatever that is. This nav 1 frequency uh, is feeding instruments, HSI, CTI and others, or RMI. If you select VLOC, this frequency is feeding the instrument, but if you select GPS, the frequencies are not feeding the instruments, 
Instead, the GPS procedure and flight plan is feeding the instrument. It's very important to know what's displayed on which instrument, which needles on which instrument point to what device, either an R na uh, radio navigation beacon on the ground, which frequency is here, or a GPS point in magenta, and this gives the source VLOC will be frequency is feeding the instrument, but GPS will be GPS flight plan feeding the instrument. These are the switches up there, um, push, you can change the frequencies, why, why isn't it working? Okay, hold a long time for 112.5, oh, switched 112.5, which is a useful, um, and, and 7,000, 700, 7700 emergency frequencies. Turning the, this switch on the top left will allow you to change the volume. It, press once for squelch, SQ for squelch. Okay. But uh, bottom uh, right hand corner uh, is the switch to change the nav frequency. So you can push, push switches from COM to nav. Yeah. Push on these switches from COM to nav as you can see. The inner, bar, the inner circle changes the decimals, the bigger circle changes the hundred larger numbers. The minimum is just by out of interest, 109 or 108. 108 something, so nav frequencies apparently start at around 108. What's the maximum? 117 for nav. And what's the com? What's the com? No. What's the upper level of frequency? One three four four ah one three six from one zero eight to one three six would probably be the ranges of frequencies usable for common nav for gen for aviation. That's just a reminder. I have to check regulations, but this is the general idea. Okay, um, transponder squawk. If you click on it, it goes to ident. If you click on the number, you can change to the uh, squawk number given by the ATC. 512, enter, and I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, will be able to use some of it in some of your flights and maybe your IFR flights using these flight and procedures um, options here. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.